Hi, this is sec section 6.3, AP Calculus, Solving Equations by Separation of Variables. If you notice, this is similar to 6.2. We're just going to do a few more techniques. And a lot of it is just setting up the algebra uh, to get your y's on one side and your x's on the other side, or whatever your two variables might be. Okay, so um, if we have a... And this form goes into differential equations and something that if you take a differential equation uh, course later on, you'll see all these different forms. And then how do you solve them when they're in these different forms? Well, in this case, if we do have it in this form, we're able to separate the variables and get uh, th x's on one side, y's on the other. And that's the whole idea. So don't worry about this too much as long as you can do the algebra to sort it out. All right, so if we solve these uh, by separation of variables, what we have to do is, uh, first of all, solve for, well, you can solve for dy dx, but let's, let's see how this works. y, y prime. I'm going to get all my x's on the other side. So I have all my x's here on the right. Here's my dy dx. In fact, I'm going to write dy dx and get rid of that. So if I look at this, I have my y's on this side, I have my dx, so this would go over here. So ultimately I have y dy is equal to 6 cosine of pi x dx. So I have y's x's, beautiful, that's what I want. So then I can integrate both sides, so this is y squared over 2 is equal to, now if we do this one, we have to do a little u substitution. And so du is equal to pi. I need that pi in there. So I'm going to have a pi and a 1 over pi. So with this, I get 1 over pi. And then the 6 will go along too, 6 over pi. And then the antiderivative of the cosine is the sine of pi x plus c. And then if we want to, we could change this by multiplying both sides by 2. And so we get y squared is equal to 12 over pi sine of pi x plus, and this is 2c. Well, that's still a constant, so I'm going to call it c1. So I meld the 2 and the c together to get c1, and that's how we represent it. So either way in the blue here or else in the red would work. Okay, so that's your differential, um, solving for your differential equation, your general solution. Now we got to do the same thing here. And notice that these do fit this form that we talked about earlier, mx. Well, not exactly, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. So what we want to do is, once again, get your x's and y's on opposite sides. So if I do this, negative x, y prime is equal to negative ln x over y. I can get rid of that. And then I need my y's over here. So that would be y dy dx is equal to, I move the x over here, ln x over x. Put the dx over here, and then I can integrate both sides. So this is y squared over 2 is equal to uh, this one. We have u is equal to ln x, du is equal to 1 over x dx. So I see both of those things here. So this is just u. So this would be u squared. The integral of this would be u squared over 2, so I just end up with ln x quantity squared over 2, and then plus c. You can multiply both sides by 2 again if you wish, but you can just leave this, and that's fine. So separation of variables, get your y's on one side, your x's on the other side. You can't really have plus signs unless if over the plus sign is all multiplied by a dx, so you got to be careful with that. Uh, so this one, find the equation of the graph that passes through the point and has the given slope. Okay, so here's my slope. Uh, if I look at this, then I want the equation of the graph. So what happens is that in a general solution type situation, I have many, many graphs. However, I want to look at the specific solution, and this is really just finding the particular solution for this differential equation. So if I set this up, I get dy dx is equal to 2y over 3x. Get your x's on one side, your y's on the other. So this would be 1 over y dy is equal to 2 thirds or 2 over 3x dx. 
So I separated my variables. Y is on one side, X is on the other side. Now I can integrate. And so this would be ln y is equal to 2 thirds. And this would be 2 thirds x to the negative 1. Well, the antiderivative of that would be ln x. So 2 thirds ln x plus c. Now, if I do the e business, I want to solve for y. So I want to do the exponential on both sides. This one. I get y equals, I, I don't need the absolute value anymore because uh, the y is equal to an exponential, so it's got to be positive. And I'm going to go um, e to the 2 thirds ln x times e to the c. What happens is that if I have e to this power over the plus sign, that's the same thing as these bases being applied to both with a multiplication between. In other words, if the bases are the same, you add the exponents. So that's how I get up there. So I'm just doing it in reverse order. So this is y is equal to c e to the 2 thirds ln x. OK, so that is my general solution. They give me the point 8, 2. So at 8, 2 now, I can plug this in and find the exact equation that I want. So y is equal to my 2 is equal to c e to the 2 thirds ln of 8. Now, I don't like how I'm solving this one. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change this up a little bit. If you look at this one, this is e to the ln x. So what happens is I can take this 2 thirds and put it as the exponent up top here. And so then I have my ln, which can cancel too. So really what happens is that this is going to be equal to c, and then this just becomes x, uh, I'm sorry, x to the 2 thirds. I keep on writing 3, sorry. c x to the 2 thirds. Um, and so this would be a lot easier to work out. And so this means that 2 is equal to, so I plug it in here. And then I'd have x, which is the 8 to the 2 thirds. Well, the third root of 8 is 2, squared is uh, 4. I forgot my c there. So then c times 4 is equal to 2. So c is equal to 1 half. So overall, my final equation is going to be y equals 1 half. That's my c value. And then I'm going to write with this form x to the 2 thirds. So I don't even have any e's in my final equation. All right. I like this in the red a little bit more just because I simplified this out a little bit earlier. All right. Now, if we look at this differential equation, number four, a calf weighs 45 pounds at birth and gains weight. And this, so this is your weight and how it's changing with respect to time is equal to uh, or is proportional to uh, 1100 minus the weight and where w is the weight at time uh, t. Okay. Now, does this make sense? Well, my weight is less than 1,100. And so I, I, I got to believe that the weight is changing. It's going to be positive. So in the end, I bet my k is going to be negative because this one would be negative up to 1,100. Okay, so let's see if we can uh, find this differential equation and solve this out. So I'm going to get. I'm going to bring this over to the left side to get all my w's over here. dw is equal to, and leave the k over here with the t. It's just a lot easier. That is a constant, constant proportionality. Now I separated my variables so I can integrate. Now this one screws a lot of people up. A lot of people want to go, oh, this is ln 1100 minus w. No, it is not. And why it's not is because we have to do a u substitution. So u is equal to 1,100 minus w. So du is equal to negative 1 dw. So I need a negative in here, which means it's overall negative. So I need a negative out in front here. So that's the difference right there. And so this is equal to kt plus c. Now with this negative, I don't like it over here. You can leave it here, but it just gets um, a mess to solve. I just find it a lot easier to move it over to the right side. So that's what I'm going to do. 
So this is going to go over here. Negative on this C still is C, so I'm not worried about that. So then I E both this. And then this cancels out, so I get 1,100 minus W is equal to, and once again, I get C E to the negative K T. E to the C becomes this C here. This is capital. And then if I solve this out for W, negative 1,100, and then I make this positive. W is equal to 1,100 minus C E to the negative K T. Can you change this negative and call this a different constant? Sure, but let's just leave it like this right now and uh, figure out what we got here. Now, in other words, now we got to find what C and K are. Now, C is not the initial value in here because you have this other constant going along as you start. But we do know that our initial weight is 45, if you look up at the instructions. So I have 45 is equal to 1,100. 1100 minus C e to the negative k times 0. So this is 1, C times 1. And so then C is equal to, C is equal to 1055 because at time 0 we have 45. And then we know that at time 3 our weight is, if I look up here again, our weight is 180 pounds. So we have 3 comma 180. And so if I plug that back into up here, I'll solve it out, and I'll just go ahead and do that. And I ended up with K being uh, 0.547 with the negative there. Then you get this. If I left that negative out, you got to be careful. Uh, and your K is actually positive, but then overall in the equation it becomes negative. I was trying to go ahead and write this. I made a mistake. I forgot I was solving off of this one, not this one. So this should be negative here, positive, negative. OK? And so with this, what's happening is that, yeah, this is decay. But I have a negative quantity here that's decaying. So this value overall is getting smaller and smaller as t gets bigger. And so you're going to get closer and closer to 1,100. And I would, con I would bet that as t goes to infinity, then our W is going to go to 1,100, which probably is the weight of a adult cow. All right? So that's what we're looking at. And this is just more differential equations and separation of variables and how to solve them and how to use them. Uh, your homework is here, and you'll probably have a web assignment once you get to class. Thank you very much. Have a great day.